She is. Because one day, okay, remember when Nicolas Cage got arrested for hitting his wife? And by the way, men, you know what? If you hit your woman, guess what? You have my full undying support. <laughs> Especially you, so she's a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> That's why I couldn't be a dyke. I could not have a girlfriend, because you fucking whores never shut the fuck up and leave us men in goddamn peace. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I would punch my girlfriend in the snatch every time I had <laughs> like a speed bag thing. <laughs> so sure it out. So so this fucking asshole cage hits the wife, dog bails him out. So I put out a little tweet that said, Dog the bounty hunter bailed out Nicholas Cage for spousal abuse. This may be the biggest mess Dog's gotten into since the last time he went down on Mrs. Dog the Bounty Hunter. I know, because you know her freaking undercarriage and all that fucking shit is rank as fucking fuck. <laughs> Those fangs hold in moisture and odor, trust me. That's why she had a very guy named Dog, because her cunt smells like alpha. <laughs> Once again, not one fucking husband's laughing though. You're working it, dude. You're trying hard. She hates you right now. <laughs> Don't worry, Chelsea Handler's coming to town. You may be able to get tickets for that one. So, here we go. Here we fucking go. Beth, that fucking cunt, gets mad at me for that freaking joke, even though it was hilarious. She's like, Lisa. She talks to that fucking stupid, fucking butt, fucking stupid. <laughs> The old Billy fucking redneck nigger saying fucking. She said, You're the Lord. You heard that shit. I'm not gonna forget about that any fucking time soon. This is dog fucking cunt. She said, Oh, you Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. You're lucky it's Sunday, cause I don't do no fighting on Jesus' day. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, first of all, I'm a comic. I don't take a fucking day off, okay? And second, the only Jesus I know is the spick who stole my car, so fucking look into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> women in the mail. But then, you know what, Chris? I feel like really guilty about that, because I am a secretly nice person. So I said, no, no, no. It was like that. I'm just kidding around. It's just a joke. I am a big fan of your show. It's a joke. And then she tries hitting me where I live. Listen to this, Jew cocksucker. <laughs> She's like, well, if it be's a joke, then it'd help if it was being funny. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I am not delusional. I am a woman of very few talents. I'm not gonna win a beauty contest, and I can't suck a dick worth of shit. I even use my teeth on purpose to discourage further inquiry. That's right, suck your own fucking dick, I'm a celebrity, and I want to ruin your Get the fuck away from me, you fucking asshole. But one thing I am is a funny fucking bitch, so Beth, suck it, suck it. take a joke. Isn't it cool like you see everybody laughing when I make fun of them? Well, guess who's really fucking cool? Old people. Yeah. There was a guy at the seven o'clock because, you know, he's fucking old. <laughs> he was 67 years old and he laughed at every fucking thing. Well, guess why? Because he has very little time left. Fucking enjoy it. I'm always found if you're old, or if you're a minority, you always like my show because you've been through a lot of shit. Blacks, Spicks. Well, Spicks laugh because, you know, they have no job to tire them out. So they're, hey, 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 fucking jumping me. Bags have a great sense of humor. Their asses hurt from the night before, so they jump right up. They're all happy. Well, this fucking thing happened with an old person. You're going to love it. You remember when Jean Jacques Gabor got her leg cut off? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, amputation day is a national holiday for the next player. What happens is, she gets the leg cut off. What am I gonna do? I have to address it on Twitter. It's my fucking obligation. 
not happy people. So I tweeted out, Jean Jean Gabor is selling her home. She needs to downsize now that her shoe collection got cut in half. <laughs> is that little heebie Jew bastard faggot off the TMZ, that Harvey Levin. Uh, and he tweets out, oh, Lisa, oh, too soon. Do you think that fucking made me back off? I have not apologized for a fucking joke in 25 years. I just make more. I'm like fucking Doritos. Jew face. I was like, Jean Jacques Gabor is selling her home. It's 28,000 feet. <laughs> Which is 27,999 more than she has. <laughs> and you want to know what the best thing in the story is? I get a note from Jaja -Ja and her husband saying they love the jokes. How cool is that? older people, huh? It's so cool. And when I see those at a slot machine, I think, oh, we pointed out him. You're like, don't fucking hate your boyfriend. That's a hate crime. Don't hate my boyfriend. Are you an Asian? It's okay, I won't make fun of you. Yes, I will, you are. Which type of gook are you? <laughs> Which type? Which, Japanese? <laughs> This is how the apprentice works. Mr. Trump gives you the task, you run to these vans, and you start working. Well, this fucking asshole Ferrigno always would yell, Thank you! Shotgun is what I'm trying to find. You want to speak deaf? Thank you! Okay, so Ferrigno yells shotgun, okay? Because he wanted that fucking front seat so he could turn around see what we were saying about him. Well, fuck you, Hulk. I want to be able to talk about you loudly and with exaggerated facial expressions, okay? So every day, Trump would yell, go! I'd fucking break a sweat and run and I'd grab that goddamn front seat. I don't give a fuck for you, handicap. And he's like, he'd come up to the window and he'd go, Lisa. 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 I need the front seat. And I'd be like, oh, I have no fucking idea what you just said. <laughs> I'd be like, still not getting it. Seriously, you're fucking getting the program. I need the front thing because I read lips. Like, oh, you read lips? Now, how about you start with Victoria Gotti's camel toe? How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> this show's fucking nuts, man. Check this shit out. Okay. Check it out. Check it out. Alright. Boardroom fucking insane. They make it super fucking uncomfortable. Like, you guys see it on TV, like 20 minutes. It's three fucking hours, and you're sweating your goddamn cunt off because they shut off the air conditioning. That's right. I'm 248 fucking pounds, and those fucking assholes shut off the fucking air conditioning. And all the girls are like, oh, I'm cold. Yeah, because you're sleeveless, and I have to wear a fucking sweater to hide my bingo arms, you fucking skinny cunt. They call them bingo arms in my family because grandma would yell bingo and knock the chips off of everybody's car in the church. I hate them. So one day it's the boardroom, right? And Trump's on one side, and it's me, just three chicks, right? It's me, Miss Universe from Venezuela, and there's Clay. So the three of us bitches are there. And it's right till the end, so we're fighting it out and fighting it out. All of a sudden, the director goes tape change, which means you have to shut the fuck up and you gotta remember where you were in the fight when the cameras come back on. 
So I'm fucking pissed, you know? Every boardroom, I was fighting for my fucking life with these goddamn idiots! So I'm sitting there, I got half moons of sweat under the tent, the gun is hanging. It sucks, man. Life is fucking horrible. So all of a sudden, Trump goes, oh, I'll lighten things up. And he goes, listen, it doesn't matter what happens here today. Because you're all fantastic. And we're all going to be huge. Diana, my beautiful. And then his wings, his universe. You'll always be big in Venezuela. Lisa, you'll always be big with the Jews. And Clay, you'll always be big with whoever your people are. And suddenly Clay jumps up and he goes, Mr. Trump, I'm gay. And Trump, in all fucking delusional seriousness, goes, you're gonna be kidding me. <laughs> Why you appear so masculine? <laughs> and I fucking had to jump up. I go, Trump, you ferret-headed cocksucker. Are you kidding me with this shit? Have you never seen a bigot display of faggotry that is on my feet? <laughs> this guy is so gay, he should have conned him. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> What a fucking trip. I'm glad I did the show, but it almost drove me off the fucking edge. Thank God I had a husband at home who was supportive and left me the fuck alone. Jimmy big balls, I had just met. Oh, Jimmy always gets applause because his sack is fucking clapping for you backstage. It's so big. It's disgusting, okay? I know you faggots love big hairy balls. Us fucking chicks want to cut them the fuck off. They're disgusting. Looks like that thing a hobo ties on a stick and puts over his shoulder. I haven't seen anything that big and hairy since I stood next to Rosie O'Donnell at Curves. <laughs> Fucking ball sack is the bane of my existence. But during The Apprentice, Jimmy was real supportive. But listen how stupid people are. Listen to this shit. Me and Jimmy are smart enough to get married when we're 49 years old. That's called fucking genius. Because guess what? How late are we really going to live? 20 years tops. Uh -huh. We're dead in the fucking ground before we get sick of each other and want to put a bullet in our fucking heads. So how many years are you married to this fucking sweetheart? How long? Oh, you're not married? Run for your fucking life, sir! Oh, she's all right. But listen, Jimmy's a good guy. But listen how dumb people are, so you're gonna laugh at this. Fucking people go to us even to this day and age. They go, ah, you're nearly 